Hello guys and welcome back for another video. Yeah, we're banging them off now. We're banging them off now. We are in the 2021 F450 Platinum. We got the 2021 Diamond C 40K rated trailer behind me and we are ready to rock and roll. So today I am going to hopefully finish off like the clearing mulching portion of a job. We have about an hour and a half drive to get there. Uh, Got to pick up the machine, bring the machine back today regardless whether it's done or not. The mulching part will be will be done today. I'll be done with the mulching part today. We cut and chipped yesterday and used the excavator to feed the chipper. We got the big part of it sort of cleared, the host part of it cleared. It's soft, it's rocky, it's, it's uneven. It's honestly a bit of a nightmare job to work with as far as that goes. When I get there, I'm gonna swap out the bucket, put the mulcher on, and we're going to uh, to clean up that lot. So uh, so it's been, this is the fifth season for that mulcher and uh, for the excavator and the mulcher. So the fifth season. So by now, I certainly know whether it's a good setup or not. And I can tell you that it's been, it's been top notch. It's, it's, it's done well for me. It's paid for itself a hundred times over, to be honest, compared to using the chipper and bush saws and all that sort of stuff. It's done really well. I had to make some modifications to it, which I'll show you guys when I get there and I'll explain more when I get there, but I get asked a ton. Um, you know, I'm looking to get into the industry. How's your Kubota been doing? How's the FAE doing? Would you buy the same head? You know, all that sort of stuff. I have another mulcher. Uh, I have a 75. This one's a 125 on my, on my four ton. I got the 125 on my eight ton. I'll explain to you what one that I would buy if I was to do it again all that sort of stuff so let's get to the job site all right first stop the new building we bought we actually just bought this building we're going to do some work to it and create some office space uh, it used to be the municipality building here in bridgewater we turned that c can there into my into my wife's office but yeah we just bought this building it's got uh it's 11 000 square feet it's got a big garage out back, a 60 by 26 garage. We're pretty excited about it. All right, so let's check out what we got going on here. So obviously, I need to clean out this road. That is number one. Number two is people were down this road last night. Yeah, boat launch, people coming in here with trucks. They think this is a public access. It's not. It's Buddy's private private land and people are using it like they own it even with no trespassing signs at the start four wheelers coming in here anyway so I got to clear this road out this is where the clearing starts so this was all yesterday this area was all like this very thick a lot of it was too big uh, to you know efficiently do with the mulcher so I, we, we cut it use the use the excavator the chipper saws but this side here is not too bad. I'm going to pick my way through this. I'm going to put the mulcher on today. And we'll see what we can get done here. Um, but yeah, this is the task at hand. This was yesterday. This will dry out nice now that it's all opened up in here. It is all rock. It's uneven. It's not going to be the easiest terrain to work with. But it is what it is. It's what we got. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put the mulcher on this thing. And then I will... Uh, sort of fill you guys in on how it's been if I recommend it all that sort of stuff and I can tell you one thing I am not looking forward to cleaning out the tracks on this thing oh that is gross all right guys so now that I finally got the hoses on which is uh, a downfall with this honestly these quick connects there's nothing quick about them no matter what you do, they tell you the certain ways you can bleed the pressure off the lines and whatnot. It never works. This big line, every time I have to break the pressure there just to get the line to go together. There are different style connections I'm looking at getting. They do kind of snap in, but then they thread on instead of this. Of course, my phone's ringing like it does all day, every day. But anyway, this is the DML HY uh, VT125. And I've had this for five years, so it's still going, it's still going strong. It's uh, it's done very, very, very well for me, to be honest. 
what have I done to it to beef it up? Okay, so first thing is this plate comes from factory with like a 3.8 plate. It's nowhere near thick enough. It doesn't do the job. This bows and then it pushes your gates out the whole thing. I mean the sides out, the doors out, the whole thing bows. So my uncle actually just came up with a lot of these ideas back when he was working for me. So he cut this off, put a one inch plate on, haven't had a single issue since then. The other thing that happened was inside the drum here, there's bearing and shaft going through. There's like a snap pin sort of thing from, from factory that keeps it from going back and forth. That kept letting go and breaking. So again, my uncle came up with an idea. They took it to a machine shop, took the shaft right out, put a set screw sort of idea into it. Never had a problem since. And the other thing that we had to replace, we had to replace last year, was one of the hydraulic cylinders. Other than that, that is it. The only other thing that happens on a regular basis is the guys. I've done it once, but I've had to replace this connection, this cord, uh, right here, like five times. People just keep smashing them off. But other than that, um, no issues with the mulcher whatsoever whatsoever this thing has done so well matched up to this machine if i was going to do it again i think i'd go with the 100 versus the 125 because all it is is the length of your drum and if you're into smaller stuff all the time the 125 is good because you get an extra width extra cut as you're going but if you're into decent sized stuff like i am today that actually hurts you because you have a bigger drum to spin with the same amount of hydraulic flow so if I was going to do this again, I would definitely do the FAE, hands down, 100%, nothing but FAE. But I would go with the 100 versus the 125. The beauty of the FAE is the gates. Most companies don't have these gates. This is a heavy mulcher. This mulcher is like 1,200 pounds. But with the gates, you know, if I'm doing stuff along the water, I can close my gates and keep all this stuff contained in a nice, nice area. If I'm in a wide open spot and I've got some big stuff, I can open my gates, top the tree, and away I go, and if I want to, I can close the gates and clean it up at the end. So the gates are key. Gates are huge. It's a big reason why I love this. Uh, my excavator, to be honest, this thing has been pretty much bulletproof. You change the fuel filters in this, and you're basically good to go. The uh, I replaced the rollers at 3,000 hours like you're supposed to. I replaced the hydraulic filter filters and fluid fluid at 3000 hours like you're supposed to the main drive is starting to leak back here on this side i got to replace that um no issues with the tracks no issues with the blade no issues with anything else just keep the fuel filters changed because if you don't this thing won't run if they get dirty it won't run other than that guys this thing has been this thing's been great i did it does have some battle wounds I mean, I'm in the bush basically all the time in situations like this. It's starting to look, you know, pretty beat up. I did this myself. I was doing a road job. It was ice. It was icy. And I slid into the ditch and dented it. Of course, it knocked this off. The orange is not really, <laughs> not really orange anymore. But man, this thing has been, this thing's been great. It, uh, compared to my sanding, it's definitely a bit tippier. You know, in this stuff with ripping up stumps and boulders and whatnot, it's definitely tippier than my sandy. It weighs 2,000 pounds less, but you can get into much tighter areas because you don't have a whole lot of uh, tail swing. But anyway, we're going to fire this thing up and uh, see what we can do here. But if you're looking at getting into the industry, Kubota is a fairly reasonably priced machine. The Mulcher, honestly, FAE is the best in the business. I dare someone to tell me otherwise. Um... This is a good setup. This gets you going with, you know, this. it's definitely expensive. You know, you're looking Canadian to buy this machine and this mulcher, you're looking at 150 grand. But <laughs> the new Cat 309 is $191,000 by itself. So, uh, yeah, you can get into this machine and the mulcher and still have money to boot. You don't have a dedicated hydraulic uh, motor for your for your auxiliary like the, like the new 309 does. But this does pretty good. I can I can mulch, I can swing, you know, all at the same time. It doesn't it doesn't inhibit me from doing other things while the mulcher is running. But we it's gonna give it a test here today. We got some big stuff, we got some small stuff. I gotta get in amongst some stuff. But uh, let's see what we can get done here.
All right, guys, so uh, maybe three, three and a half hours runtime. We got that side cleaned up good enough with the mulcher. Definitely have to come back in with the saw. He doesn't want all these trees left, but you know, you just kind of mark them up with the excavator if you're trying to get too close to too close to one tree or the other. So, you know, we'll clean up around these trees. I'll get him to mark which ones he wants to keep to begin with. Um, those small ones I'll clean up before I leave. But yeah, it, uh, you, there you see it in action. It does a great job. This was completely a day ago. Well, I guess not quite a day ago at this time, but yesterday morning, this was all like this. You seen how thick it was on this side? You see how thick it is there? You couldn't even walk down this road, it, even in the morning. I mean, now look at the driveway. Driveway is wide open and good to go. I gotta come back in with the with the excavator, uh, the, the sandy. I'm gonna come back in with my 95 and the chipper. We'll clean up this straggly stuff, rip out all these stumps, grub the grub that side off, and get ready to go. I will clean up a little of this, a little bit of this on my way out, just do a better job of of hitting it with the mulcher, but. It's a lot of rock in here. I don't want to smash up my teeth too bad, but yeah, there it is. Honestly, if you're looking to get into the game, I would highly recommend this setup. If you're gonna run an excavator with the mulcher, definitely get yourself the smash proof glass because I don't can't count how many times I would have had sticks or something going through my windshield. Even yesterday grubbing this lot off, I had a rock fling back and hit and hit uh, the, the windshield. And if it was glass, it probably would have broke to be honest. But yeah, no, it does a good job. And uh, guys, guys always ask me, why are you using an excavator and not a track skid steer? Well, look at the terrain we have here. It's all rock, it's all dips. A skid steer would be no good to me at all in this stuff. I'd have my teeth completely ruined. It would just, it just doesn't work. For what I'm doing, it doesn't work. Um, this, if I'm gonna run one machine, it's gonna be an excavator. I love to add a skid steer, but definitely not by itself. And, uh, you know, a lot of my work, a lot of my work also is roadsides for um, the tower sites and stuff. And you, you're trying to get the ditches and you can't do that with a skid. The best situation for me is an excavator, hands down. Uh, the, Kubota's, the Kubota's done good. I really can't say anything bad about it whatsoever. It's, it's banged up. It looks like crap right now, to be honest, especially behind the new truck, the new trailer. It looks kind of funny, but, uh, it is what it is. But anyway guys, I'm gonna get this thing loaded up. We're gonna come back in and clean this up a bit more next week with the other machine and the chipper and the saws. And he's gonna have a beautiful spot down here. Like, you can really, really picture it now with the lake. The lake's right there. Uh, we'll come back, you know, we'll, when we come back, we're gonna clean up that row, you know, along the water so you can get a beautiful view of the water. Might even scrape some of that uh, high bank that are down so he doesn't have to climb up over top of the bank <laughs> to see the lake. But no, he's gonna have, he's in a nice spot, he's a buddy of mine. Uh, of course, I'm giving him a good deal. Oh, there we go, a big blue heron. Yeah, I'll probably grab the excavator and knock this bank down some too. Definitely stay away from the water, but the high water mark is, is, is good. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna affect anything by scraping that top off. I won't touch any of the rocks or anything like that. Whole crap load of geese right over there. Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Um, hope you enjoy the video. Any questions at all, hit me up. I know I've answered a ton of questions over the years on this thing, on this setup. Um, I should be a sales guy for FAE to be honest because I think I've sold them a lot of mulchers for excavators. I'm getting too many people in the business and I'm starting to get some competition around here. Anyway guys, until next time, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you then. Bye.